older flame retardants, particularly some older brominated flame retardants, are very persistent in the environment. So we find them in air, soil, and plant and animal products as well, and that's how they can enter our diet. Flame retardants are a really big category of chemicals, and this is a category of a chemical use, not necessarily a chemical structure, and that means we have very different effects or potential effects from different types of flame retardants. Young children have higher exposure to flame retardants because of their behaviors. They have more contact with house dust and because of their hand-to-mouth behavior, they have more accidental ingestion of house dust, which is typically associated with high exposure to flame retardants. When we look at the older flame retardants, we can see if regulations that have brought in to restrict their use have had an effect on reducing our exposures. And when we look at the new flame retardants, we can better understand what our current exposures are and better assess what the risks of these new flame retardants might be. Uh, at the same time, HBM for EU will also answer a lot of questions about what the toxicity and the health effects of the new flame retardants may be. It's very difficult for consumers to know what flame retardants are in products, uh, but they can try to buy products without flame retardants, which can be identified by some eco-labeling systems, or just focus more on natural materials, which may have lower levels of flame retardants and other additives. Also, consumers can reduce dust exposure by cleaning homes more and ventilating indoor space more regularly. <laughs>